Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Since AMD launched their 7 nanometer RDNA based GPUs, most outlets and reviewers have heavily focused on the RX 5700 XT instead of its little brother, the plain old RX 5700, and for good reason. It is the more powerful of the two, and the design is a little more wild and, well, dented. But what if I told you that a 5700 can become a 5700 XT? Well, it can. Sort of. See, like the 5700 XT, the 5700 has a software limit imposed on how high you can overclock it, how much extra power you can give it, etc. And this isn't just in Wattman, it's actually built into the registry, but there's two ways of overcoming it. You can either use the soft power play table mod, or you can actually flash the 5700 XT's BIOS directly onto the 5700. That's right, just like Vega before it, you can effectively turn your 5700 into a 5700 XT. Of course, the 5700 still has less stream processors, so it's not exactly a 5700 XT. With that said, it will look like one to your OS, and you'll be able to get some very similar performance, but I'll get to that in a second. Now, I'm not going to go over exactly how to do each one, but I'll link both methods in the description, as well as go over why you may want one over the other. And with any overclocking, understand that you are taking at least a bit of risk. There's plenty of safety features in modern graphics cards, but things can still happen, and going over AMD's limits definitely means they won't help you if something goes wrong, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, with that out of the way, there's two options, the soft power play mod and then that full BIOS change. The soft power play mod is definitely the easiest of the two. All you have to do is delete the current GPUs in your registry with the display driver uninstall application, then install the power play mod you want and restart your computer. The issue with this method is that once you install a new driver or any update that could affect the GPU in your registry, the change will be overwritten. That's where the BIOS mod comes into play. It will literally make the OS see your GPU as a 5700 XT, meaning even updates will simply install the 5700 XT registry with its restrictions, which are much higher than the 5700s. The issue is that it's not very simple, and if you mess up, you risk breaking your GPU. So you've got to decide if you're willing to take the risk. Whichever method you end up deciding on, the limits of the 5700 will be much higher than before. And this is where things get really interesting. See, you may think the 5700's limits are there so your brand new GPU doesn't get fried. And that's probably a part of it, sure. But AMD could simply make it clear that overclocking voids your warranty if they wanted to eliminate their liability issues. Needless to say, the 5700 can do a lot more. During my testing, I was able to overclock the stock 5700 all the way up to 2 GHz and it ran benchmarks like a champ. The blower fan did get really loud, but while I didn't have a third party 5700 to test, I'd very much bet a decent cooler could mitigate that by a good amount. During tests, the overclocked 5700 got as high as 1961 MHz during a time spy benchmark compared to the stock 1710 MHz, which is over a 15% increase in clocks. When it comes to the time spy scores themselves, the overclocked 5700 got a gaming score of 8544 compared to the 7544 of the stock GPU. That's nearly a thousand points more. What's interesting is that the stock 5700 XT got a score that was only 2.5% higher. And the gaming results weren't much different. World War Z saw a nice increase from the stock 5700 to the 2 GHz overclock 5700, and the overclock 5700 got higher minimums versus the stock 5700 XT, though it did get lower averages and maximums. Then Far Cry 5 on Ultra got something similar, though the non-overclocked 5700 did get better minimums to the overclocked one, yet lost in average and maximum FPS. So what does all this mean? Well, the 5700 is clearly capable of getting much higher clocks than the limits set by AMD, and even if my particular 5700 was simply a lottery winner, I'm pretty sure that I could have pushed it even higher. With that said, the 5700 XT can also get clocks higher than the maximum overclock allowed by its software, so in my opinion, the arbitrary limit set on both cards is a bit ridiculous. Still, it seems pretty clear that just about anyone can nearly turn their 5700 into a 5700 XT right now. So while that does it for today, let me know the highest clocks you've gotten out of your RX 5700 down in the comments below, or just let me know what you think about Andy's newest cards. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.